here today with Daryl Colbert, the head football coach of the Beaumont United Timberwolves. How are you doing today, Coach? Coach, I'm, I'm good this morning. How are you? I, I am doing well. Well, one of the things I'm trying to do with these interviews is kind of illustrate how coaches wind up where they are, what, what their paths are. Your path is probably a lot different than most coaches, but if you don't mind taking us through how you wound up uh, at Roma United. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, <laughs> I tell you, you know, uh, this was not planned. I, I have to say uh, I've been gone away from Beaumont uh, going on almost 40 years, man. I, I uh, graduated here. I went to high school here, grew up here in Beaumont, and I've been gone a long time. I've been uh, from uh, Kansas City to uh, uh, and, uh, a little bit everywhere, and to end up in Beaumont was not planned, but I'm really excited. Uh, as someone told me, it's come full circle. So just uh, telling you a little bit about my path, how I got here. I was the head coach at Westbury High School in Houston for the last couple of years. Before that, I was a director of football operations at Texas Southern University. And uh, before that, I kind of worked at a couple other schools. Uh, was at Texas Southern a little bit before that as well. And I've been, I've been working with kids a long time. I've been working with kids over uh, 30 plus years. I've, I've trained, worked with kids because what I've always had in me, I always wanted to give back what my coaches gave to me. And that's something I always enjoy doing, of giving that back of what my coaches gave to me because I say this a lot, I am the man I am because of my coaches, what my coaches helped me do and what they instilled, the values they instilled with me. Uh, but coming, going back to the Beaumont United job, uh, the job came open, I think, uh, back in, uh, I want to say maybe uh, late February, uh, and I didn't have plans of putting in for the job. I got a call from a good friend of mine and told me about the job, and um, I thought about it, but I said, you know, I was okay being in Houston. Uh, you know, we've my wife and I of 32 years, we've been in Houston for a long time and uh, we were pretty comfortable with where we were. And but, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a man of, of belief. I, you know, I believe in God. And sometimes when things stay with you, uh, they just kind of just, you know, just knock at you a little bit. I believe that is of God. And I told my wife, I said, you know, this Beaumont United job keeps just staying with me. She said, are you serious? You're talking about moving back to Beaumont? <laughs> Which my wife is from Beaumont as well. Uh, my wife is from Beaumont, and we never thought we would move Beaumont, move back to Beaumont. We've raised all our kids in Houston. Uh, I still have two nieces we're raising now. And uh, then I talked to her again. I said, hey, I'm thinking about applying for this job. What do you think? She said, so you're really serious about this? I said, yes, I am. And uh, once we talked about it and uh, prayed on it and it was just something that we wanted to do. And I told her I, I really wanted to come back. And as I said, give back to what my coaches gave to me, give back to the community of what the community gave to me. Because this community gave a lot to me of the values that I still live by as a man. And so we applied for the job and here we are. Now you, you talk a lot about uh, kind of the mentoring that you've received over the years from, from different people and taking different things from different people. Now, uh, in the past several years, you've been in that role of being that mentor, that example. Talk about being that mentor for your coaches in your programs, preparing them for whatever they're going to do next. Absolutely. Uh, I've been, I've been a, under some great coaches, uh, even when I was playing, as well as guys that I've worked for. And, and what I always try to do is give the coaches that – that have worked for me, just uh, the guy that that took the job at Westbury where I just left was my defensive coordinator. And I tried to always explain to coaches that, you know, I, that one of the questions that I ask coaches when I interview them, what is your goal in this business? Because I, I believe that coaches or people are only good to where they're trying to reach their goals. And I want to help people reach their goals. That's something that I want to do with young coaches. Uh, I'm not afraid to hire young coaches because I believe everybody needs an opportunity. And if they have the values 
Uh, they are totally into building relationships with kids. I believe they can become good coaches. I believe everybody, you can learn the X's and O's, but the issue of what I've seen in the past and some places is where guys just want to be football coaches rather than guys that build relationships with students, student athletes. And that's something I talk to my coaches about all the time. So I want guys on my staff that want to be coordinators. I want guys on my staff that want to be head coaches and I want to be able to help them and be that shining light for them and let they let them know that they can do that as well. As I said, the uh, gentleman that just got the job at Westbury High School is Jarvis Kelly. Jarvis was my defensive coordinator last year. Uh, as I said, I want to give young coaches opportunities. Uh, when I took the job at Westbury a few years ago, my first defensive coordinator, Eric Mitchell, was 27 years old. Uh, I'm not afraid to do that because I believe if somebody is really – into helping young men and young student athletes, I believe they can be successful in this business. And that's something that I want to do for coaches. Yeah, you've been on, uh, been on the campus. You've had a chance to see some of your, uh, some of your athletes. Uh, so uh, tell me what you think you'd look like for 2022. Well, I think we have some, I think we, we, we really have an opportunity here to uh, have some success. I believe, the kids are on the campus. I mean, there are some great looking kids here. I tell you, uh, there, and then the thing, this is Beaumont. Beaumont is a place that is rich in history in football. Uh, I, I believe they say kids have changed. I don't believe kids have changed. I believe adults have. I use the analogy. We have to meet kids where they are to get them where we want them to go. Kids are not like they were when we grew up to where, you know, kids have so many outside things going on that, you know, attracts them and maybe not totally keep them away from sports, but it's kind of the, the turn sometimes. So we have to, you know, go and find the kids. Now, I mean, the kids are walking around the campus, so we have to go and recruit the hallways, as I call it. We have to go find the kids and, and, and talk to them, talk to their parents. We have to give some things, camps and different things and put in place that kids want to be involved in our football program. So I believe – with the kids we have here, I think that there's a there's a, there is a possibility that we can have some success here. All right, now so let's go back a few years. 1982, summer of 1982, you're going to uh, Ebert High School, and it comes down. They're going to merge Ebert, Forest Park. There's going to be Westbrook. Kind of take us through what that football team meant to that process of merging that, that inner city school and that, that uh, suburban city school? Well, you look, I, that's why I love, I tell kids and I tell people all the time what I love about sports. Sports takes a lot of the common, the common things what a common person that when you see somebody, everybody has a perception of somebody. Uh, either how they look, how they're built, or those type of things. Sports evens the playing field, and you just we are just looking at the, the ability of a person or the character of a person. We really find out who the person are. And what I love about it in the team aspect of football, it brings people together for one common goal. And that's what it did for us, and we had such a great coach and Coach Alex Durley, he looked at all kids as, as they were his kids. He didn't look at a kid as a black kid. He didn't look at, at as a kid as a white kid. He looked at, and we never, that year was, yeah, we had some differences when we first got there, and it wasn't really because, I don't believe it was because of us as the students. I think it was more of an adult thing than it was the students because we never had any issues among ourselves as when we came together, we went out there in the spring and had spring football. There was no problem. When we got there in the fall among each other as players, there were no problems. So I think the things that they talked about, and I remember as I gotten older and I start talking to people, it was more of adults that where the problem had lied. It wasn't the problems, the problem with us as student athletes. We went out there and some of those same guys you know, we, I remember uh, probably about uh, seven years ago, we had a 30-year uh, reunion where they 
record, you know, they, they acknowledged us and guys came back and man, we still, you know, it was great to see those guys. We had a reunion about four years ago and it was great to see those, those guys as well. So I think what that did, I think it showed people that if you, if you come together, it doesn't matter of color, you can do some great things. And that's what it did for the Beaumont community. Uh, before I let you go, uh, one more question for you. Uh, can you tell me one thing about Farrell Colbert that uh, most people don't know? Well, that's kind of a tough one, man, because, you know, I, I always say I am what you see is what you get. I, you know, I'm this guy that, you know, man, I'm, I, I love my family. Uh, uh, I love what I do, man. I, you know, I would do this for free. I love working with kids, man. Uh, so probably, I, I don't know, is one thing that people don't know that, about me because this is what I do, man. I, 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 I love working uh, to help young people grow uh, to be something, you know, to reach the goals that they have for themselves. So I don't think I'm this, this one person that people will be surprised of who I am because uh, kind of what you see is what you get, man. I, I, I spend, a, you know, I'm, when I'm not doing this, uh, this weekend I went home and uh, spent time with the family. And uh, so Monday through Sunday, I'm, I'm here trying to you know, better our football team. As, as I said, when I took the job here, I'll work every day tirelessly to help these young people kind of reach the goals that they have. So I don't think there's anything that people would be surprised about me of who I am and what I do. I think, I, I, as I say, I'm this, this person. I think what you see is what you get. That's who I am. Now, you were, if, if my uh, notes and research are correct, you were a firefighter at one point? I was. I did that for 20 years in the Houston area. Um, I did. I was I was that. I did that for 20 years in the Houston area and uh, stopped doing that back in 93. Uh, it was a great career, man, you know. Everything that I've always done has been about helping people, uh, helping the community, and uh, coming back home to Beaumont, man. I'm I'm just so excited about that, just to be coming back home to help my community. And uh, I grew up seven minutes from here walking. I walked this, to this school every day when I was growing up. Uh, but yeah, that my career as a fireman was a great career. I had a great career doing that. Uh, I was what's, what's called an engineer operator. I drove the fire truck for like 17 years. So it was something that I really enjoyed doing and uh, giving back to, to the community and helping. All right, Coach. Well, thank you very much for your time today and uh, best of luck on the upcoming uh, season. Okay. Good deal.